Christian Espinosa is with us, a cybersecurity expert, and our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. Uh, Christian uh, is a, a guy that's going to tell us about some of the uh, interesting ways that we can protect ourselves. Uh, and, and Christian, over the weekend, we had the, the prime example of what what is going on in the world of cyber uh, and uh, traced. Was it really traced, the Microsoft hack, traced back to the Chinese government or just to Chinese entities? Uh, well, the, the, there's a lot of speculation that it was traced back to the Chinese government, um, but I don't think um, you know we'll we'll for sure know until uh, you know a few weeks go by. Yeah, Christian is the CEO and founder of Alpine Security and the author of the best-selling book, "The Smartest Person in the Room: The Root Cause and New Solution." for cybersecurity. You know, folks hear about these data breaches and uh, and people say, there's the warning for you. Be sure you're protected in, in cyberland. But Christian, do we really know how to do that? Uh, we think we know how to do that. And I, I talk about that in my book. There's a lot of focus on the wrong things, in my opinion, uh, being the focus is on technology and on processes and procedures. And the focus really needs to be on, on the people from an awareness and education perspective. Um, yeah, so we need, we need to shift our focus. And, and it's, an, it's a new approach as well, is it not? Uh, this idea of the acronym is COM. What does COM stand for? COM? Uh, I'm not sure what, what, which acronym you're referring to. Uh, the compilation of many breaches uh, is, is the oh. term that is... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, basically, um, there's a you know a different data breach almost every day, uh, as we just discussed you here in the news, mm -hmm. uh, and and we need to look at you know what the root issue is, and that's that's what I talk about in in my book, the smartest person in the room. The root issue is not lacking that we don't have the right technology or we don't have the right framework. It's it's really that the people that are in charge of protecting us from cyber criminals uh, are, are typically very smart. They have a high IQ, but they have a low EQ or, or, or poor people skills. And, and the combination of those two things um, is, is problematic because uh, if, if you're trying to position yourself as the smartest person in the room, you're going to have difficulty communicating with the people about the true risk with cybersecurity or the ways to, to fix the risk. Uh, and, and really work well as a team to keep the cyber criminals out of our environment. So the cyber criminals, they basically have the upper hand because they're, they're better teams, right? They're better teams, yeah, and, and they're, they're more passionate as well. And, and they're, they're, the risk is greater for them, too. I mean, if they get caught, they can go to jail, uh, obviously, where, uh, and, and this is how they make their money, whereas on the, on the good side, a lot of people have also entered the career because uh, the skills gap, uh, primarily uh, just to have a stable job and make money. So there, there's a lack of passion there as well. Yeah, and uh, and so they're getting the upper hand, and and it seems like they're always a step ahead of every of everybody else. So so we end up uh, on the losing end of this equation, and we need to find a way to turn that around. What are some of the steps we can take, Christian? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's challenging for the people defending the network because they have to get everything right, whereas the cyber criminals just have to find one single way in. Uh, some of the steps we can take, uh, and, I, and I have a seven-step methodology I cover in my book, uh, are really designed to improve how a technical team uh, communicates and works together. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, we have some super bright people that are really good with computers, but we have to collaborate uh, and work together uh, and be able to communicate the, the, the challenges and the technical issues in a way where other people can understand it. Because, you know, the meaning of communication is response you get, and if you're asking for a budget and the budget is legitimate but the budget's getting turned down, perhaps it's because the highly technical people aren't communicating the risk in terms of the business or the organization. And on a consumer level, then, uh, that is where it really comes home, because um, we as the consumers are the people uh, who are hooked up with, say, this service or that, whether it's a streaming service or whatever it is that, that gets hacked. Uh, we're the ones that end up paying the price because it is our data that is, is compromised, correct? 
Exactly. Yeah. It, it, and then the, the division between consumer and, you know, business is, is pretty blurred, exactly like you said. Uh, if, if the business is not secure, but the, the business has all of my personal data, then I am personally at risk as well if, you know, a service I use is compromised. And exactly. so, yeah, we have that sort of a helpless feeling that uh, we think that we should be able to trust this company or that one simply because of its size and the fact that uh, this is what they're all about. This is their business. Uh, and yet that trust sometimes uh, is, is misplaced because maybe they're not as secure as they should be. And, and that creates a, a great, great conflict in our minds about whether we should be putting our information out there. Yeah, you, you almost have to assume that any data you you place on another organization's system or you know service you use is going to be compromised at some point. So some things you can do around that is make sure, for instance, you don't use the same password on, on multiple systems because if the password from one of your services you use is compromised, then that the attacker, the criminal, can use that same your email address and password on every other system. So, you know, there's a few things we can do, but the underlying assumption needs to be that any data we put out there is more than likely going to be compromised. So we need to be careful what we put uh, in the hands of another organization. We're talking with Christian Espinosa this morning. Christian's the author of The Smartest Person in the Room, uh, The Root Cause and New Solution for Cybersecurity. You mentioned how many steps, seven different things that we can do that you outline in this book? Correct. I have a seven-step uh, secure methodology, I call it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so as as you have uh, put these uh, theories of yours uh, into practice, I'm I'm sure that you've gotten feedback at, that this worked or or that this needed strengthening. Um, how has it gone? Uh, it's gone very well. I, I actually developed the steps working with my, with my the business I founded, Alpine Security, and some of the challenges I experienced. Uh, so I applied. Uh, you know, different training and different uh, concepts to my organization. And what came out of the, the things I've learned were those seven steps. So they're, they're like proven steps that worked for my organization to improve our ability uh, to communicate and improve my highly technical people's ability to work with our clients and each other. Christian, after we have been hacked and our information has been stolen and we become aware of it, and usually it's because our bank accounts are being drained or there's some other uh, way that people are getting at us, um, how easy uh, or how difficult is it for people to recover and get back to some sense of security? Uh, It's very difficult uh, because once your data is stolen, it's like you can't, you know, you can't get it back and erase that it happened really. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, you know, changing your, your password is, is like step one. Uh, do using a different password in every system is, is ideal. And then enabling some sort of a multi-factor authentication. So you require more than a password. You also require a PIN to be sent to your phone or something. Uh, can really minimize the risk uh, of an attack. But, yeah, once your data is stolen, it's, there's no... You know, undoing it really, unfortunately. All right, so we got to get the book. We've got to get this book, The Smartest Person in the Room. Christian, I'm assuming Amazon is a good site for it or, or any of the other sites. Uh, where are we going to learn more about you and your system? Yeah, my website, ChristianEspinoza.com, is the best place. Terrific. Terrific. Hey, thanks for being with us this morning, making yourself available to us. Uh, after we had the breach over the weekend, it was like, oh, here comes another one. We need somebody to clear it up for us. <laughs> yeah, there'll probably be, probably be another one tomorrow, unfortunately. <laughs> Don't tell me that, Christian. <laughs> we're, we're trying to Sorry. finish up beat here. We're trying to finish up beat. <laughs> <laughs> Have yourself a great day today, okay? All right. Awesome. You too. All Thank right, you. Bye now. There's Christian Espedosa, uh, and uh, it is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, 101.1 FM and AM 1160. FM and AM.